Okay, so next, uh, let's talk about non-fungible tokens. So we've talked about um, the ERC-20 and how it could be an equity token, it could be a governance token, it could be a utility token. So NFTs are different. So they are uh, created uh, via um, Ethereum's uh, you know, protocol. It's called an ERC-721 rather than ERC-20. And this is the non-fungible uh, token standard. So uh, the difference between a fungible and non-fungible token is that every token is different. Okay, so it's not the case that any two NFTs are equal in value. Um, and 10 of, you don't do the addition sort of uh, thing that we do in uh, fungible tokens uh, either. Everything is unique, a unique ID. And uh, interestingly, when they first came out, people talked about N NFTs as deeds. And I think that's a, a good intuition. So think of it as a deed that essentially gives you ownership of something that's very specific. So you think of a deed to a house, for example. Well, that's very specific uh, to the house. So one deed for one house uh, is not necessarily equal to a deed for another house. So more generally, it could be a bond or a loan contract or something like that that has got a unique ID and a token associated with it. So remember, I'm very much of the opinion that everything will be tokenized in the future. So some things, it kind of makes sense to use an ERC. So for example, gold. So if you've got a token that represents one gram of gold, uh, then, uh, then it needs to be fungible. So two tokens, both of them representing one gram of gold should have equal value. However, there's many other applications where uh, the, the asset is unique. And it might be as simple as a lottery. So it doesn't make any sense to have lottery tickets that are ERC-20 because everything's the same. How can you figure out the winner? But if you had ERC-721, then one is drawn. So the idea of lottery, I'm not sure I talk about it uh, in the course, but I should. Um, you can run a fair lottery in terms of the, uh, in terms of decentralized finance. Like today, if you buy, uh, if you bought all of the lottery tickets, you're guaranteed to win. But when you win, maybe you get 50% of your money back. So the expected rate of return on a lottery is basically minus 50% on a traditional lottery. And we know that that money uh, supposedly goes to a good cause uh, many times, but that's beside the point. The point is, within this system, we can run a fair lottery where uh, the money is put into a smart contract. There's one winner that's drawn by random, and all of that money is transferred to the winner. So again, this is a good uh, example of uh, an NFT application. However, in the news, there's many other uh, uses. And indeed, NFTs can represent collectibles. So it's not just deeds. So deeds are important in finance. As I said, a loan contract uh, is, is like a deed, but it could be something that's collectible. For example, ownership of a piece of art. So in the first course, I actually mentioned art also uh, and in a different application. So it might be that you've got some art and then you issue ERC-20 tokens where many people can own a piece of that art and potentially for investment purposes. So you think the art is going to go up in value? So uh, it's, you can't afford the fine art on your own, but you can afford a share 
and this would be like an equity share of that art. So for NFT, it's different. So in NFT, uh, you actually would own uh, the art. So one owner of the ERC-20. And indeed, uh, Beeple uh, made a lot of uh, uh, press where basically uh, one piece of art, the NFT, uh, sold for $69.3 million. But it's not just this. So there are so many other uh, applications of NFT. So people are uh, selling NFT on certain video clips. It could be music. It could be even a tweet that's sold as an NFT. So anything collectible uh, is a possibility here. Indeed, I believe that a very interesting application of all of this is in the gaming world. And there's a lot of untapped value. And a lot of people that are using uh, games or that are gamers are very sophisticated also in terms of uh, technology. And it just seems a natural area uh, to go. Uh, there is also uh, something called ERC-1155. So one thing with the ERC-20 and the 721, uh, they require an individual contract. Uh, to be deployed on um, a blockchain. So if you've got many tokens, this can be cumbersome. And ERC-1155 uh, allows you to have a mixture of fungible and non-fungible token types. So um, this is important also for another reason, and that is that uh, there is a possibility of a multi-token model. So this is going to be important a little later on where we're thinking of investment and investment pools and liquidity pools, and this innovation is a, a good uh, innovation.